very soon. Um, and we've been having Wednesday nights, been trying to have choir practice uh, and all, but we really actually do need to know if we have those that are willing to do that. Uh, just see Allison, tell her, hey, yeah, we're, I'm, I'm good. We're going to, I'll be a part of uh, the cantata, I'll be a part of the choir, whatever. Um, that way we'll know and we'll be able to kind of adjust and uh, see what we can do in respects to um, practicing and preparing for that. Um, also, uh, seeing the opportunity at Brookshire, you'll see that there. Um, uh, information is available there. Uh, but also, I received, um, received a word this week. Um, uh, Randy and Janet have friends that have set up a, um, a mission uh, to help those that are in Afghanistan that are refugees. Um, this is a ministry based out of Tajikistan. It has about 800 miles uh, worth of border with Afghanistan. Um, and for anyone who might be led that might wish to be a part of this, um, there's a ministry to help sponsor a child to, or excuse me, sponsor an individual um, to relocate uh, those that are uh, displaced or even to provide food. There's, a, in, there's a abilities to do that. Um, the website is Walt with me dot global walk with me dot global and uh, if you would like a little bit more information i'd be happy to send that out so uh, just keep that in mind if you will um, this morning as uh we had this time before so are there any other announcements anything else that is happening that i have missed that needs to be made known yes i see that hand Hope you are. Everyone makes you feel welcome, and 
Uh, you are blessed today through, through all of the service. It's always wonderful to hear uh, stories like that of individuals coming. We do hope the Lord blesses you here today. This morning, anyone else? Anything else? Uh, well, as we go to the Lord, let's, uh, let's bow in a word of prayer as we have this time before us. And um, the Lord, let us, uh, and let us commit our hearts now to the Lord. Father, Lord, thank you so much for the opportunity, for the chance, for the, um, for the blessing of being here in your presence. Lord, I, I thank you for each and every one that's here, uh, for the conversations that were able to be had of catching up, of connecting again. Lord, of, of one uh, to be back after a while. Father, thank you for the joy of fellowship. And as we come into your presence now to worship, to, to lift up our hearts to you, we pray that you would visit here with us, that you would touch our hearts and our lives, that you would guide and direct us as only you can. Lord, that today would be a day of great change, of great worship, Lord, that today would be a day in which you would bring glory and honor to yourself. For it's in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Our call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 103, verses 19 through 22. The Word of God says this, The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O oh, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh, my soul. Feel free to hum along in your hearts as Allison and I sing, Blessed be the Lord God Almighty and all creatures of our God and King. Yeah. 
prayers this morning. We do have many that are before us uh, on our prayer list. Um, one uh, I know that we have added this week, um, this is uh, R. J. Overman. Uh, Leslie gave me a text um, uh, concerning his prayer request. He uh, just recently had to um, go through some uh, dental procedure where about 20 teeth had to be pulled. So um, the request was for, for quick recovery there, that everything would go well. And uh, I believe everything has. Um, Continue to remember the many that are before us on our prayer list, um, those that are sick and on beds of affliction, um, those that are in need of healing touch and help. Um, we do still have many that are, are battling sicknesses that are uh, having to be at home, um, that uh, are, um, are recovering either from COVID or surgery. Um, please remember these that, that have been uh, that are on our prayer request list. Please remember our nation, too. Um, just yesterday, we remembered the 20th anniversary of the 9 11 attacks. And each and every one of us here was touched in some way. Um, I know individuals that lost friends on that day, um, those that they knew, those that they um, do well and it changed our world it changed our nation on that day um, each and every one of us remembers where we were during that time um, I was on Interstate 85 listening to K-Love and heard the report didn't want didn't know anything about it um, until I got to school and found out uh, just what all had actually occurred um, it changes. So I know many of us are remembering those times now, and it is good that we not forget. But we do need to remember those many that, that were hit so hard by this. Continue to remember our service men and women. Um, and remember those that um, are, are dealing with a great deal of things in the world today. Haiti still uh, being rocked by that earthquake. All those that are within Afghanistan were then uh, being relocated and, and some tremendous things going on in that country. Um, we, we do pray for safety and well-being. Um, so let us remember these many that are before us. Um, today, as we go to the Lord in prayer, who else can we remember today? Or if you have a praise report, uh, what praise do we have to give to the Lord today? Remember uh, Sharon Davis's father, Wayne McGee. Um, the young with some cardiac problems in the hospital there, so uh, let's remember him in our prayers. Anyone else this morning? Oh, yes. Uh, I'd like to remember my grandmother, Mrs. Jennifer Davis. She passed away last week. Uh, she was a Let's remember. Calvin's granddaughter, five years old. Uh, her name? Uh, Paige. Okay. Paige Moore. Remember Paige in her prayer. Pray that she would have a quick recovery uh, from being diagnosed with COVID. Yeah. Who is? We have a praise. Yes, we, we do have a praise. Uh, Y'all let you go. 2 a.m. last night, Daniel and I became a great uncle and a great aunt. And his he's uh, Jimmy Sorensen III. Yes, uh, this is Allison's sister's uh, oldest son, uh, his son. So right. we're uh, a grandmother. Now. Yes. So uh, we were already great aunts and uncles to to all of our nieces and nephews, but now it's just more of official there. So uh, yeah, we're very very excited, and very glad too that uh, we didn't get a text at two a.m. this morning. So <laughs> um, who else can we remember? Yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
good to hear with us doing better keep listening him up in our prayers anyone else let's go before the Lord remembering these that have been mentioned as well as those that are on our hearts Father Lord thank you so much for just the blessings that you pour out on us each day for the help and the hope that we have in you for the testimony of someone feeling better for a new life entering into the world for the promises you give us in scripture each and every day Lord thank you thank you for the grace that has sustained us each and every moment of each and every day and Lord, we look to you now to help us in the days ahead. We need you every hour. And Lord, we know that you will be with us, and we praise your name. Lord, humbly we go before you with these requests that have been made known to us. If we remember Paige, and we pray that you would help her to, to uh, feel better from having COVID. We pray that you would give healing. Lord, for Wayne McGee, as, as he is in the hospital, we pray for good and continual care that you would help in his hour of need now. We pray that you would watch out over all of these requests that are before us in our prayer days, that you would help and that you would um, guide and direct all of these that, that are under the weather. We pray a healing hand would be upon them. But Lord, also our, for our nation, as we remember the attacks that happened 20 years ago, Lord, we know our world changed then. There are still those that mourn losses. We pray that you would help. You would help us not to forget, but Lord, that you would help us to move forward, to make this world a better place. As we remember the many in Afghanistan that are going through tremendous circumstances, we pray that you would give protection and help in this hour of need. For those that are rebuilding in Haiti, we pray that your hand would be upon them, helping. And Lord, we, we lift up even those that are, that are rebuilding from this last hurricane, from the flooding and, and all that occurred there. Lord, I pray that this rebuilding process would go quickly. Lord, for the request of our hearts, as we all are dealing with struggles and difficulties, we pray that a great and wonderful work would be done. Lord, for our church, we pray that you would help us. Help us to be one for you. Lord, help us to seek after your glory in all that we would do. I pray that you would allow us to be what we have been established to be, a light set upon him, shining forth the truth of your word, the gospel message, to show love to this dark and dying generation. Father, may you work within our hearts and our lives today as we continue to worship you. For it is in your name we pray.
Allison was a little nervous that uh, she wouldn't get to get the uh, song right there. <laughs> I think she did good. <laughs> Joshua chapter 1, excuse me, 1 verses 10 through 18. And Joshua commanded the officers of the people, Pass through the midst of the camp and command the people, Prepare your provisions, for within three days you are to pass over this Jordan, to go in to take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving you to possess. And to the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua said, Remember the word that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God is providing you a place of rest and will give you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your livestock shall remain in the land that Moses gave you beyond the Jordan. But all the men of valor among you shall pass over armed before your brothers and shall help them. Until the Lord gives you rest to your brothers as he has to you, and they also take possession of the land that the Lord your God is giving them. Then you shall return to the land of your possession and shall possess it. The land that Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave you beyond the Jordan towards the sunrise. And they answered Joshua, all that you have commanded us we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. Just as we obeyed Moses in all things, so will we obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever rebels against your commandment and disobeys your word, whatever you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. May God bless the reading of his word as we meditate upon. Go ahead and be turning to Joshua chapter 1. We're going to be finishing up this chapter today. We're in a series entitled, um, uh, for, excuse me, Possessing the Promised Land. And this morning's lesson, lesson is preparing to pass over Jordan. Preparing to pass over Jordan. You ever been unprepared for something? You know, completely unprepared, man. Yeah. We're all, at some point in time, we have those uh, those little things come up. I, I remember back about 20 years ago, Carowinds uh, introduced a new ride. Some of y'all might remember this. It's called Drop Zone. It's probably been renamed about 40 different times uh, since then. Basically, Drop Zone was a big stick in the ground. And on four sides of it, there were chairs that you willingly came in, and they lifted you up 10 stories in the air. Once you got to the top, you stopped. 
And then all of a sudden, without warning, they dropped you. And you went down. I went on this thing like four times. <laughs> and four times too many. <laughs> uh, there's part of my spleen about seven stories up. It's just... It doesn't matter. It, it, you could have lights. You could be trained. You would never, ever, ever expect that big, massive drop. Wednesday, uh, Allison, Grace, and I, we went and got our flu shot. Um, and uh, about, they were really good down at Duke. They got us in and out super quick. I remember oh, we had a great nurse. We, we all get into a room together. The nurse is like, all right, who's going to go? And, and, you know, I eventually get up there, roll my sleeve up, and the uh, nurse goes in, puts that alcohol swab on, and great, wonderful nurse. In fact, she actually asked me, you tell me when you're ready. And, uh, I, you know, she was just great. We got in and out super fast. In fact, um, I think next month I have a physical. So um, when I go back, I want to make sure I find that lady and finally tell her I'm ready for my shot. <laughs> um, <laughs> there are, within our life, times where we need to be prepared for things. In verses 1 through 9, Joshua is being chosen by God, saying, listen, Moses is dead. You're now the one. You're the servant of the Lord. You're the one that's going to be leading the nation of Israel. And he was given the keys to Canaan, keys to the promised land. God said, listen, I want you to lean and be dependent upon my promises. I want you to have confidence in my presence, and I want you to have obedience to my word. Joshua, in verses 10 through 18, turns to the people and says, listen, I want you to be prepared. He tells the children of Israel that the time to enter the promised land has come upon them. Therefore, you need to be prepared. They're going to receive what God has for them. And Joshua says, listen, in order to receive it, you've got to be prepared for this. So he gives them things to remember, acknowledge, prepare for, that their character... So their, their character is going to be prepared for what God is going to give them. So often in our life, we, we have stumbling blocks because a lot of times we aren't, we aren't ready. I, I remember growing up, I, I worked at a church youth camp, and I worked in the, in the kitchen area. And we had one little problem that kept coming up when kids would come up in the morning, and they were going to get their drink. They are either going to get milk or they were going to get um, orange juice, something like that. And they come up and they have a little styrofoam cup. Now a styrofoam cup that is absolutely and utterly empty doesn't weigh anything. You don't hardly know it's even in your hand. But a drink inside of it, and you have a bunch of orange juice a lot heavier, a lot of times the kids weren't ready. And they'd hold their, their cup out with just enough strength, but when that blessing came, it just went all over the floor. A lot of times we have to prepare to receive what God has. The Lord knew he, knew he could only give the children of Israel a promised land if they would be prepared and they had such character to hold on to it. We think of the disciples at the beginning of their ministry. What did Jesus say? He said, listen, guys, just follow me. Follow me. We're going to do all the job training. And they followed Jesus for three years. And then at the very end of it, they were ready. So what did Jesus say? He said, listen, go into all the world and make disciples. Why? Because they were prepared. Today I've got a simple question. Are you ready? Are you prepared to go and receive what God has for you? If God said, hey, listen, I've got a ministry for you to do. I've got, a, I've got a blessing I want you to go receive. I want you to go and do this in my name. I've got a work for you to do. Would you say, hey, I'm ready. My shoes are tied. I've got my, my phone is charged. I've got keys. Let's go, God. Or would you say, God, wait a minute here. Hold on. I'm, I'm not ready. God, I haven't eaten yet. I'm not... I haven't got the right clothes. I haven't got this. I haven't got that. I, I'm, not, I'm not ready yet. Or is your mentality, Lord, 
I'm ready. Let's go. My, my hope today is to go through the Word of God. So we'll do a, a heart check. A heart check within us to say, Lord, you know what? i got to get ready. Or I am ready. Or, Lord, I'm, I'm not, but I want to be. Today we'll look at five characteristics. Five characteristics essential for claiming your promised land. Things we can have within our life that we would say, yeah, God, you know what? The call has come. Let's go. Five of them, number one, is this. Readiness to receive God's promises. Readiness to receive God's promises. Verses 10 and 11, Joshua goes into the camp. First words he says, prepare your provisions. Get ready. The time has come. Three days from now, we're going to go over the Jordan. Three days from now, we're going to go and we're going to go and, uh, and claim the promised land. We're going to begin this promise. And it's interesting. He says, hey, get food ready. In the wilderness, God had supplied manna. But he said he was only going to be supplying manna until they got to the promised land. The promised land was a land flowing with milk and honey. It was an image of great abundance, of great wealth, of great um, resources. So here it is. He's saying, listen, get your food together because we're going to be having a change. We're going and we're no longer going to be in the wilderness. We're not going to have wilderness food. We're going to be having promised land food because you need to get your provisions ready. We're going in to the promised land. Notice this because there's some amazing lessons for us. So he was wanting this readiness because without it, they weren't going to be able to go. Notice two things real quick. Number one, to receive, we must be prepared to leave. To receive, we must be prepared to leave. Those words that came out from, uh, uh, from Joshua probably scared some people to death. Because it had one word they were not ready for, and that was change. Oh, no, wait a minute. Hold on, Joshua. Wait, wait, wait. We've been in this wilderness a real long time. I just got my tent up the way I wanted it. I got the flat screen finally hung. It's good. I got my antenna set. I can get stuff all the way from, from uh, Egypt here. I'm good. I, I don't know if I want to do all this change. I'm enjoying it. I'm kind of an outdoor type. I don't know about that promised land. Rather than getting ready to move where God wanted them to be, they might have wanted to rationalize and stay in the wilderness. Let me give you a simple truth. We will never get where God wants us to be if we refuse to move from where we are. Somebody here today might be hearing God say, you know what? I need you to move away from that sin in your life. I need you to move away from that person that is bringing you down. I need you to move away from that bad habit that has infiltrated your life. I'm going to deliver you and get you to a better place. Listen, to receive, we must be prepared to leave. But notice also this, God's promises are often picked up not delivered. They're often picked up, not delivered. Notice, uh, we live in a weird time. Well, I won't say weird. We live in a very blessed time. We can get not on anything we want to deliver to our door. Today, if you want Taco Bell, you can get Taco Bell delivered to your door. Amazon will deliver, Grubhub, Walmart will deliver groceries. I remember a day you could order something from Sears, and Sears would not text you, wouldn't email you. They would call you up on the phone and say, hi, your package is here. Come and pick it up. And you would go into uh, Sears, and you would say, hi, my name is so-and-so. I have this to pick up. And they would go back, and they would hand it to you. Friends, listen, there's a lot of the blessings that God gives us. He just gives us right where we're sitting. It doesn't matter where we are. God will rain them down. But there's other blessings we have to go and say, you know what, I've got to leave where I am to be able to go to where God's blessing is. The Bible talks about growing in the Christian faith, of going from milk to meat, of maturing in our faith to be able to take that spiritual meat of the Word. Joshua was telling people, hey, listen, it's time for the change. Pack up and get ready. Friends, is that you? 
If God gave you the assignment, would you say, hey, the shoes are tied, let's go, let me get my hat on, let me get my sunglasses on, let's go. Or is it, God, I'm happy where I'm at, I really don't want to move positions. Readiness to receive God's promises. Notice number two, prudence in personal duties. Prudence in personal duties. Prudence means this, the ability to govern and discipline oneself by the use of reason. Joshua, in verses 12 through 15, addresses the tribes of Gad, of Reuben, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. And he does this for a very important reason. Back in Numbers 32, if you want to go back and look, these tribes went up to Moses and said, Moses, listen, the land that we're in right now, this, this land that is east of the Jordan that we haven't passed, uh, that, you know, the Jordan River, east here, it's a really good land for what we want. We want to, to graze cattle. We want to raise livestock. And look, this place is magnificent for us. So rather than going into the promised land, can we stay and settle this land that we are in? And Moses in that time said, well, okay, you can have this, but that doesn't, uh, that doesn't take away your obligation to go in and fight for your fellow countrymen. We're all together as a nation of Israel to go in and claim the promised land. So what was Joshua saying? He's saying, listen, you've got a duty based on who you are as a, na as, a, as a member of the nation of Israel, that yes, okay, your women and your children, yeah, they're going to be able to stay and settle, and they're going to be able to do all of these things. But you know what? Your mighty men of valor, your soldiers, they're going to go, and it's your duty to go forth and fulfill that vow. That's the idea of that promise that, are, that was made. You know what? There's a lot of lessons in there. There's a lot of tough lessons in there for us. That we as Christians don't exist in and of ourselves. We are united together as the family of God. And we have duties and responsibilities beyond ourselves to our brothers and sisters in Christ. We don't get to go out and just make a living just for me. We don't get to go out and just say, well, I'm just living my best life now, just me, and I'm happy and go lucky. We have duties and responsibilities that go outside of ourselves to touch the hearts and lives of the lost and also of the children of God. And you know what? I give to you this. Whatever promised land God is wanting to move you to, whatever better place God is trying to move you to, it won't be in isolation. It will be blessed with other Christians. It will be blessed with other people that you can minister to and they can minister to you as well. So often there's so many borderline Christians. We just get right beyond that border of, oh, I know Jesus, that's all I need. I know Jesus, I don't really care. Friends, today, how are you doing with your God-given Christian duty? Let me give you two things. Number one is this. Our identity should define our duties. Our identity should define our duties. Gad and Reuben and Manasseh, their identity said they had a duty to fight. So what did they say? All right, yes, we made the promise. We're going to go and do it. Uh, when I was in high school, my high school job was I worked at Harris Teeter. I was a bad boy at first. Um, and, and I would go in, and one of the responsibilities that I had was I had to go get shopping carts, had to go get buggies in from the, uh, the parking lot and had to go bring them in. And I'll tell you what, there were points in time I hated doing that. It could be pouring down rain. I didn't want to go out there. It was snowing at points in time. I didn't want to go out there. It was burning hot. I really didn't want to go out there. But you know what? It was my duty. I didn't get to go and say, well, look at all these other people. No, that's, that's not their duty. Christians in your life, do you say, you know what? Because of my identity, I have a duty as a Christian to follow after Christ. Listen, our identity should define our duties. But notice our identity should match our actions. Our identity should match our actions. We are called to have actions that match who we are in Jesus Christ. We always say that thing, you know, people ought to know if you're a Christian by the way you live. This is one of the reasons, this is one of the things. Because we are found in Christ, we live a different way because we have that duty. 
prudence and personal duties. But notice number three, surrender to the commands and callings of authority. Surrender to the commands and callings of authority. Verse 16, and they answered Joshua, all that you have commanded us, we will do. And wherever you send us, we will go. These people may stand with the Lord saying, listen, Joshua, we understand. God chose you. You're the authority. We're going to surrender to that. This is the key to growth and moving to a promised land and moving to your Canaan and to wherever God wants you to be. It is that absolute surrender of life in every aspect to God. I know we don't like that. It rubs us the wrong way. You know, oh, this is my part of my life. But you know what? God wants us to that, surrender to that idea of authority. And many times authorities are things that God has set up that, that we look at and maybe like rubs us wrong. Our government, law enforcement, the laws that we have before us. Scripture says all of these things are of God. But when we surrender, God gives us the ability to do so much more in our life. And he's able to build our character. Notice two things. Number one, character is indivisible. It is indivisible. Usually we say indivisible when we're doing the Pledge of Allegiance. But it means it's not able to be cut up in half. You're not able to have a character at home and a character at church and a character at work and a character when you're out to eat. Your character is who you are everywhere that you go. And you know what? As Christians, we've got to own up to that and say, you know what? Yeah, you know, the character that I've got, I've got to live it out. I can't just be good here at church for two hours on a Sunday morning or maybe a couple of hours during the week. I've got to take that with me wherever you go. But notice also this. Character is clearly seen in the little things of life. Character is seen in the little things of life. Life. Uh, notice this. God will always ask more of you than anybody else. There is no entity in this world that will ask more of you than God himself. And so often, our life and our character, we reflect that character out in just a little bitty things of life. Let me uh, give an example here. Let's say you have a daughter like I do. And at some point in time, Decades, decades from now, she finally goes on a date. <laughs> Let's say that individual comes and says, hey, we're going to go here. We're going to go here, and then we're going to go here, and then we're going to go here, and then, you know, we're going to be home. And you're like, okay, that sounds great. Be home at 10 o'clock. If something happens, flat tire, traffic jam, text me, call me, let me know. And 10 o'clock comes. And there's no call and there's no text. 10.15 comes. There's no call. 10.30 comes. And right before you're about ready to pick up the phone and call the armed forces. Car comes driving up. And this boy says, well, we stopped for ice cream. And we knew we were going to be late, but I figured no big deal. Now you're thinking the same thing I'm thinking. And yes, you're absolutely right. This boy will have a very nice funeral. <laughs> we'll do a great job there. But it's horrible character. Because I, I had a small request. I was a small authority. I was nothing compared to the greatness and the hugeness of God. But a little bitty thing like that, and it reflects that character. Friends, what we do in this life reflects the character of Christ. What do you do in the small things? Because it's in those small things that God is able to do amazing and wonderful things and show Himself in the world in which we live. It can't happen without surrender. Surrender, surrender to the commands and calling to authority. Number four, we see this characteristic, submission to the direction of God. Submission to the direction of God. Verse 17, just as we obey Moses in all things, we will also obey you. Only may the Lord your God be with you. 
as he with as he was with Moses. These Israelites were promising to submit to the direction of God, to follow the leadership God had set up, to submit to the direction that God had put forth. And I know in our world in which we live in, submit is kind of like a bad, nasty word. We don't like to hear it. But you know what? That's part of the Christian life. We are servants of the Lord. Submitting is the posture of the Christian life. Lord, what do you want me to do? Friends, if we want to get where God wants us to be, we've got to say, all right, God, I, I, I'm submitting. Whatever it is, you're going to give the directions. I'm going to go that way. Two questions we should ask ourselves. Uh, number one, am I willing to go God's way? If God says go move, are you, are you willing to do it? Probably the better question is number two. And do I want to go God's way? Do I want to go God's way? There's a lot of places I'm willing to go. But you know what? I might not want to go. I got a dentist appointment coming. I'm willing to go. I don't want to go. But you know what? When my heart is right with God, I'm going to be like these Israelites saying, listen, God, you've got something planned for me. you got something promised for me. Yeah, it's all right. I, I not, only, not only am I willing to go, Lord, I want to go. Friends, do you want to go where God wants you to be? Do you want to be there and say, Lord, I just can't wait to go? Submission to the direction of God. Finally, this, number five, separation from disobedience. Separation from disobedience. Verse 18, whoever rebels against your commandment and disobeys your word, whatever your command, whatever you command him shall be put to death. Only be strong and courageous. Finally, we see this commitment. This commitment of the people of God saying, listen, we're going to separate ourselves from anybody who is going to be um, disobedient to you. And, and it was to that severe place that Joshua, he was going to be giving these directions, and they were going to be saying no. They're like, all right, look, you're guilty, and we're going to have to cut you off completely. You're going to have to be put to death. Again, the lesson here for us is clear this morning. If we want to walk in God's pathway, if we want to move to where God wants us to be, if we want to possess that promised land, whatever it might be, for our life, it's going to take us separating from those things that draw, drag us down. And it could be a thousand different things that we might need to separate from. It could be from a certain place we just love to go. It could be from certain people that we hang out with. It could be from a certain habit that we don't want to give up. But God is saying, listen, that's keeping you from being pure. That's keeping you from being on the right path. Two things and I'll be done. Number one, bad company blocks God's blessing. Bad company blocks God's blessing. What is around you will keep you from receiving all of God, or what God has for you or it will help. Israel knew this. And he said, you know what? If we got somebody that's not on the right page, no, they're not going to be around. We're going after all of what God has for us. Bad company blocks God's blessing. Finally, this, your surroundings can get you stuck. Your surroundings can get you stuck. Cold weather, Lord willing, is coming in a month, month and a half, two months. And I know there's going to be one of these Saturday mornings I wake up when something like this has happened. Friday night, a, a cold front comes in. And everything gets a little frosty. And you're in bed and you wake up after a nice, long nap. And you wake up and you're, you're like, nose is cold. It is cold out there, but under your blankets, it's warm. You're like, I like this. And you're there, and it's like, it's going to take an act of the Lord to get you out of bed. Yeah. There could be bacon frying, there could be coffee brewing, there could be biscuits in the oven, and you're smelling them, and you're like, no, I like the bed. It's, it's good. I know I'm hungry, but I don't care. Your surroundings in your life, can get you stuck and go, Lord, 
I'm just kind of happy here in the tent. Lord, I, I, got my, I got my bed just made just right here. I'm kind of happy right here. Yeah, I know it's the promised land. Yeah, I know it's a place of milk and honey. Yeah, but I just kind of like it here. Friends, is God calling you to get, uh, get unstuck from your surroundings today? To move towards Him? To get unstuck from a sin in your life that you're just playing around with? To get unstuck from your place of comfort? To get unstuck with the thing you don't want to change. And all the time, God is saying, listen, come forth, go forth, go forth. I've got a great and a wonderful thing planned for you. Today, what is God telling your heart today? It could be somebody here saying, you know what? The Lord is telling my heart that I need Him in. The most amazing and wonderful thing is that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, into this world that you might know him as Lord and Savior. And even today, on this September morning in 2021, you can know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you would simply call out to him to confess all of your wrongdoings and believe upon what he did on the cross, that he died in your place, he was buried and was resurrected. That he will gladly come into your life and give you amazing and wonderful change. It could be that God is calling you out of where you're at right now because he's trying to get you unstuck. It could be a ministry that you know you should be a part of. Some action that you need to take within your life. Some person you need to talk to. And he's just saying, hey, get ready because I need you to pass over that Jordan to go where I need you to be. Friends, today, would you commit your heart and your life to doing just that? Let's stand with our heads back. Father God, I pray right now that you would do a, heart, a work on the hearts and lives of each and every one that is here today. I pray that you would help us to be prepared. Lord, that if there's something that's holding us back, Father, I pray that we would have that, that bravery, that courage to cut ties. To say, no, no, I'm going to leave this sin behind. I'm not going to be going to that place anymore that's bringing me down. Lord, I'm going to run after you with all of my heart, with all of my soul. Lord, I'm going to come after you with everything that I am. Father, I pray that you would do a great and a wonderful work in each and every heart and life today. For it's in your name we pray. This morning, a closing hymn, hymn number 598. I thought a very appropriate one, wherever he leads, I'll go. We're just going to sing the first and the last verse as we close our time here together. Would you sing with me with all your heart as we sing unto the Lord today?
brothers, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, by the new and living way that he opened for us through the curtain, that is, through his flesh, and since we have a great priest over the house of God, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, with our hearts sprinkled clean from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. All God's people say it. Thank you each and every one for being here today. You are this day.